some reason, some diehard group of fans or whatever will be massively offended by whatever I choose to do next. So yeah, I'm, I'm used to it. I'm really proud of what, what we did, but I didn't want that to be my thing forever. I don't want to be like 50 and have people say, what, what did you do with your life? And all I had to show was silver chair records. <laughs> there was a lot of freedom to, to maybe explore genres that would have been a pretty weird thing to, to do within silver chair, like the R&B thing. And there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of kind of strange electronic stuff going on, but there's also some real like Janet Jackson-esque. <laughs> my old phone that I lost had so much stuff, which I was really morbidly depressed about for a while when I lost it. <laughs> that had I must have had like 200 song ideas and something, and then I just I don't know where it is, but maybe it's like total crap. But at the I thought it was I thought there's some good it's ideas on there, yeah. <laughs> so there was a probably about a six month period where I was really anxious. And then once it was kind of finished, I just wanted it out. Like, I'm yeah. desperate to just get it out and stop worrying about it. Yeah. <laughs> it's easier here in that you don't have to make as many compromises over here to be noticed. In America, I think if you want to talk about pigeonholing, there's a definite, definitely a very specific sound, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're kind of lucky in this country in that there's, you know, people are kind of interested to hear someone with a fresh perspective on music. I still really like the Spice Girls and um, 